Welcome, I'm Sid. In this short video, you'll witness everything you ever wondered about BitDep, and in the end, I'll clear two of the biggest misconceptions. First of all, it is very important to clarify the terms because bit depth goes by many names. Bit depth is also termed as color depth or as pixel depth when referring to a pixel. They are all one and the same thing. The best way to remember that is that they all have the same depth suffix in common. The concept of bit depth is used in digital audio, digital video and digital images. But we are going to talk about digital images. And since images deal with color, bit depth here is also called color depth probably just to confuse us. So don't mistake color depth for color gamut, which is a completely different thing as explained in this video. Bit depth or color depth or pixel depth specifies the number of bits used by each color component of a single pixel to indicate the color of that pixel. So what does this mean? Let's break it down. A digital image is made up of millions of pixels or megapixels and each pixel displays only a single color. And this color is created with three specific values of the red, green and blue color components. To see how RGB colors combine to produce colors, watch this video linked above. When we talk about an 8-bit color image in Photoshop, it is supposed to be referred as 8 bits per channel or BPC. It is not 8 bits per pixel like it's made to be sound. The three RGB color components of an 8-bit per channel image in Photoshop is 8 bits of red plus 8 bits of green plus 8 bits of blue, so a total of 24 bits per pixel. So an 8 bits per channel image, also known as true color, is the same as 24 bit per pixel image. Similarly, 16 bit per channel, or deep color as it is termed, is 48 bits per pixel. Now that we have established that, what in the world are bits? The RGB color values shown to us by Photoshop are simplified decimal numbers for people like you and me. Our computers don't understand these numbers. They only read binary digits made up entirely of 0 and 1. For example, with decimal figures, it only requires 3 digits to write the highest value of 255, but using binary figures of just 0 and 1, it takes a total of 8 binary digits. And these binary digits, in short, are called bits. Because of course, binary digits sounds too geeky, right? So the cooler geeks call it bits. And if you go just one decimal number higher, from 255 to 256, the binary equivalent will be 1 and 8 zeros, which is 9 binary digits or 9 bits total, so it exceeds 8 bits. That's why an 8-bit pixel can only have a maximum decimal value of 255. And if you have ever wondered why in Photoshop color properties in the RGB section, the scale is from 0 to 255, well, this is where the number comes from. And since you count 0 as the first value and 255 as the last, the total is 256 tonal values per color channel. And although we will never need to, it is actually possible to calculate the tonal values of a pixel. It is 2 to the power of whatever bit depth of the pixel. So one bit pixel has two possible levels. 8-bit pixel has 2 to the power of 8, that is 256 levels. And 16-bit pixel has 2 to the power of 16, that is 2 multiplied by itself 16 times, which is 65,536 tonal levels. The main difference between an 8-bit and a 16-bit per pixel is the total number of tonal values. So more the bits each pixel can have translates to a much smoother color transitions for the image. So in Photoshop, let's start with the most basic 1-bit image mode, which is also known as bitmap. You can see when zoomed out, the image appears grey. But when we zoom in all the way to pixel level, you will not find any grey pixels. Each of these square pixels are individual white and black pixels. So a basic 1-bit image allows each pixel to have only two colors, black or white. Now, if I undo this and convert it to the grayscale mode, which is an 8-bit image, you can see it transitions so much better compared to the 1-bit image. Because here we have 256 levels of gradation from black to white and various shades of gray available for each pixel. When we convert our image back to the 8-bit RGB color mode, we have three color channels, red, green, and blue. Since we have 256 RGB values in each color channel, multiply it by 3 RGB channels, we get about 16.7 million RGB values for an 8-bit RGB image. 
And if I convert it to 16 bit RGB image, if you remember the math, it will be 2 to the power of 16, that is 65,536 values per color channel. And 65,536 multiplied by the 3 channels can lead to an incredible 281 trillion RGB values for a 16 bit image. But do you see any difference in the 8 bit and 16 bit image? On my screen, I can't. If you think you can't see the difference because YouTube's video compression, you can try this on your own screens. But I'm sure you'll get the same results. There are two reasons for this. First, Photoshop doesn't exactly have full 16 bits. Take a look at this info panel options in Photoshop. The 16 bit scale here shows 0 to 32768, which including the first value of 0 is a total of 32769 RGB values per channel. It is not 65,536 what a true 16-bit offers. It is almost half of that. This is because what Photoshop calls 16 bits per channel is actually 15 bits per channel plus one extra bit. So in Photoshop's case, it is two to the power of 15 plus one, which is a total of 32,769 RGB values as we saw in the color picker. So the 32,769 RGB values per color channel multiplied by the 3 channel gives us a total of 35 trillion RGB values for the so-called 16-bit RGB image in Photoshop. Which is still a lot more than 16.7 million RGB values, right? So why can't we still see any difference? That brings us to the second and the main reason. If you have noticed, these RGB values are not colors. Thinking or calling each of these 16.7 million RGB values as colors is a bit misleading. Sure, there are trillions of color coordinates, but many of them are too similar for us to notice the difference. Let me give you an example. In Photoshop, if you see the pure red color, which has the values of 255.00 for an 8-bit version, and when I switch to a 16-bit version in the info panel, the same value for 16-bit is 32768 for red and 0 for green and 0 for blue. A much larger number is used to describe the pure red in 16-bit color than the 8-bit color. Now if I reduce the red value by just one number to 244 and fill this color side by side with the previous red, can you see any difference between these two reds? Just to show you the difference, if I hover over each red, you can see the red value change in the info panel. So the one value difference of 8 bit becomes 32768 minus 32639. That is 129 value difference in 16 bit. Now imagine 129 different gradations between these two reds. If I take the 255 red as a foreground and in a new 16-bit document create a gradient, it should have a total of 129 total shades between these two reds. Can you see them? You see, research has shown that humans can distinguish between 2 million to a maximum of less than 10 million colors in most special cases. That means we can't even see all the 16.7 million color values of an 8-bit RGB, let alone the trillion color values of 16-bit RGB. Also, when the 35 trillion RGB values are mapped to a gamut-restricted color space, a significant amount of that will end up getting mapped to the exact same color coordinate. For this reason, Photoshop will often show you a color value between 0 to 255 per channel, regardless of what bit depth you edit in 8 or 16 bits. This is purely to simplify things for the user. Behind the scenes, it utilizes the full value range. So I'm sure you must be thinking, if you can't even see the full range of colors of an 8-bit image, why work in 16 bits? Although this may seem unnecessary, the main benefit of using 16 bits is when you're editing a photo, especially when working in a larger color space like Pro Photo RGB. When you manipulate a photo, you're compressing and pushing all the RGB values around. This can create gaps between values, resulting in banding. So the more color data you have, the smoother your color gradients are going to be. So finally, the biggest misconception, higher bit depth means better quality images. So just now I've showed you why a 16-bit file is best for retouching. But the usefulness of 16-bit ends right there. The extra bits only matter for extreme color and tone corrections. You can save the image in 8 bits after editing is complete. An uncompressed 8-bit final output is equally good as a 16-bit file. It will be clearly evident when you see the histogram, which will stay intact even after the conversion of the 16-bit file. You will never see banding just because it's an 8-bit image. 8 bits already has far more colors than the human eyes can perceive. The only reason 8 bit has a bad reputation is because unlike 16 bit image, it can be saved as a JPEG. 
This means JPEG compression can be added to 8-bit files to make the file size smaller. And of course, if you compare a low-quality compressed 8-bit JPEG file to a 16-bit image, it is not a fair comparison. So don't shy away from 8-bit files. In fact, if you do all your editing in RAW and don't retouch in Photoshop at all, there is no point in converting to the 16-bit. A high-quality 8-bit is just perfect. Now for those of you who watched so far, here is a bonus myth. Can pixels be deep? Well, if you remember the term pixel depth is the same as color depth or bit depth. So considering that, pixels can be as deep as color or as deep as bits can be. So when we talk about bit depth, in simpler words, we are talking about how deep the numbers are. So to make pixel depth simpler to understand, deeper pixels, although may sound silly, they are in fact technically correct. Okay, now is the time for you to like, share and subscribe to this wonderful new channel and click that bell to be notified as soon as a new video releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching.